Welcome back to another video on Gearsaw Studios, and today, I'm going to not be building anything. I'm rather going to be ranking all of the mobs in Minecraft based off of their roommate compatibility if you had to live with them. So without further ado, let's investigate what it would be like. Starting off with this list, we have the rules, and of course, we're going to have a small apartment or a house, not anything super crazy, essentially like your first house. Then. All the mobs are passive for this. No, the Vindicator is not going to turn on you. It's not going to despawn. It can probably talk. If you think it can talk, it can probably talk. And you can't sell their roommate. So no, you can't buy a Strider for this and immediately sell it for... I don't know. And it's not going to immediately leave you if it somehow has enough money. With this, I'm going to exclude a bunch of mobs mainly because they're uninteresting for this. Because, well... A wolf is a wolf, I mean it's a dog, not really much of a roommate, that's more of a pet. Pretty much anything listed here is not intelligent enough to hold a job or doesn't have any interesting qualities that would make it worth keeping around anyways. So, with all these basic animals out of the way, now I'm going to go down the list alphabetically. For our first mob, we have the Lay, and the Lay is incredibly useful. It flies and it will happily do whatever job you want, which means it'll work and then do more work around the house. It'd be a pretty nice roommate to have it, you know, do this, and it'll come home and do whatever. Very useful for chores and such. Although it probably cannot cook, hey, you can duplicate it using Amethyst. So, using that duplication, you could potentially have a ton of allays living with you, and then you have a ton of income. So, it's probably the best deal to get the LA, since it's pretty much an infinitely duplicatable loyal employee that will bring in income and won't do anything dumb. Now, on top of that, you could potentially rent them out, and what do you know, you could be the richest person on earth just off of LA's. Next up, we have the B, and initially it might seem like, well, what's a B gonna do? It's just a B, it doesn't have any unique properties. However, there's something specifically about the Minecraft bee that really makes it much more useful than you'd think. The fact that it's so large, and the fact that it can hold so much pollen. While it's not going to be able to communicate, hey, you have so much honey. Put a beehive out in your backyard, and what do you know, you have a bottle of honey every day or so. It would be incredibly useful to keep this guy around and you could potentially sell off the honey. While it's not exactly the most profitable, it's always nice to have a bunch of honey at pretty much any time you want off of your friendly bee. With those relatively good mobs, one of which is number one and another one's a very solid pick for B tier, we have ourselves the Bogged, and this is not exactly the most useful. I'm going to lump in the Stray and the Normal Skeleton in the process since they're all skeletons. All of these are, well, boneheads. They aren't going to be the smartest, they're probably going to have troubles with the sunlight, and generally aren't going to be the most useful. Will they be kind of responsible? Yes. Do they have good aim? Yeah. But otherwise, there aren't really many applications for the skeleton. Pretty mid mob. On top of that, the bogged is probably going to stink of moss and is more fragile than the others, making it a bad pick. And the stray? Hey, at least it has cold tolerance, so if you live somewhere northern, well, you have that on your side. Generally a C tier pick, maybe low B tier, but they're not the most useful mobs because they're pretty generic, probably aren't the most intelligent, and are most likely going to be working a dead end job. So it's someone, but probably not the best. For our next mob, we have the Breeze, and at first, this looks like a very suitable candidate. It has wind powers, it could potentially power windmills and produce a ton of energy. That would certainly bring in a ton of money. However, the more you think about it, the less useful the breeze becomes. Because first off, it seems to be a little playful. Probably wouldn't be the best at being responsible. And on top of that, it's a literal spinning tornado. It's not going to be good to bring in the house. If you're allowed to keep it outside, then it might be a little bit better, but it's gonna come home and it's going to wreck the whole place, throw every glass on the floor, break it, Probably lose its paycheck on the way home too in that tornado. Probably wouldn't be the best candidate because although it's going to be 
pretty good at its job, although it gets distracted, it's going to ruin everything around it with the power of wind. While the breeze is likely to mess everything up and is pretty solid D tier, the blaze is a bit better. While I still say this is a C tier pick because of course the obvious glaring flaw of burning everything, that can also be used to the advantage. If you can keep it in the oven or the fireplace if it's okay with that, then the blaze is now a free source of heating. You can bring it wherever and now it's nice and warm. Bring it to a public function, a free space heater. The blaze has a ton of powers that could easily be used in order to net a nice buck in colder places such as the arctic or anywhere it's snowing, that is if it doesn't freeze over. So free heating from this although might cause fires. Now all the way down to C we have the chicken, which is a very very good choice. Similar to the OA, it has duplication properties through its eggs. But what makes it super valuable is the fact that it can produce an egg every 5 minutes. Even if you were to do the calculations to Minecraft to real life time, that's still 4 eggs a day. And you could probably start a whole chicken coop over it. Then, with enough time, you could potentially start your own egg empire off of this. You have a very, very powerful chicken that is able to constantly create more of itself and produce even more eggs. So, if you ever wanted to start a business empire, get one of these. Solid S tier pick. For our first F tier pick, we have the Creeper. The Creeper is not useful. It has no arms, it's not going to operate a cash register, and it blows up. It probably could talk, but it's not going to be very useful. It doesn't seem intelligent enough to do pretty much anything, and it's going to blow up. Pretty much everything you could say about it boils down to it's going to blow up, you might be able to bring it to a demolition site, and then it's gone forever. The creeper is not going to be very useful to have as a roommate. It's more of an item than anything because it's one time use and kinda is a little rude. I mean it blows things up. What do you expect a good roommate out of it? Next up we have the drowned. And at first this might seem like, oh it's a zombie, yay. Well. The Drowned has something that other zombies can't do, swim underwater. While the other ones are going to sit around, not be very useful, probably can't swim, and yes, they'll turn into Drowned, I'm not going to include that for this, and count them as separate mobs completely. The Drowned swims underwater. It's going to be an amazing diver. It's going to swim around, do whatever, and it's going to stay down there without oxygen forever. Not to mention, it has a very good throwing arm. Everybody knows the Terra's Trident Drowned are. Give one a brush, what do you know, archaeology. So you can bring this onto any research vessel, and although it's going to stink up the place like seaweed, it's going to be very useful. I'm going to say this is about a high B tier mob, because it can stay underwater forever, and that makes so many jobs that much easier. Now, we have the Elder Guardian and its smaller cousin, the Guardian. And the Guardian is an F tier. It has pretty much no redeeming qualities, and it's a laser fish. There's not exactly much you can get out of it. You could make a case for D tier because probably there's something useful you could do because the laser is confirmed to be plasma, but yeah, not very useful. But then we have the Elder Guardian. This thing would make the best prison guard ever. If you have a prison on an island, well, nobody's going into the water. We have this thing, and it's going to give everyone mining fatigue, or give it selectively. Which means all the inmates now, they're not going to be able to dig their way free. Which makes it an impressively useful prison guard. Even if it might be super hard to keep at home, it's going to be incredibly useful for that. Now we have the Ender Dragon. I think this goes without saying, you're not going to have the Ender Dragon. You're probably going to be arrested for having a literal dragon that flies around and ruins everything. There is no usage you're getting out of this, like you're going to talk to it or anything. This thing is going to fly around and it's going to ruin things. F tier, bottom of the whole list. Now, we have the Enderman. And at first, this might seem like a fantastic choice for your mob. But, think about it a little further. Sure, it teleports and picks things up, but they're at it. And now you have an angry Enderman. That's going to be a major hazard, and on top of that, it's pretty unpredictable. Teleports at random, doesn't like sunlight, 
and picks things up when it probably isn't supposed to. It can definitely understand you. It probably just doesn't care. It's going to teleport into your neighbor's houses and scare them, might even take their stuff and leave it in the street, or potentially take their stuff and put it in other people's houses, which is another major thing. So I'm going to say D tier because if you somehow manage to control it, it's a super good employee. Otherwise, this thing is going to be a public hazard that steals things constantly and attacks people who look at it. And for our other ender mob that doesn't harbinge mass destruction, we have ourselves the Endermite. And Endermite is not very useful. It's not going to be able to talk to you. It's going to anger any Enderman if there's somehow one nearby. And it's going to bite you. It is probably going to bite everything, actually. The only saving grace that puts it in C tier is the fact that it will vanish after two minutes, and you can probably punch it. I mean, it's just a mite. So, not very useful for anything. You should probably get rid of it as soon as you can. But hey, it's better than an active hazard like the Enderman is. Now, we have ourselves the Evoker. A solid S tier pick, and originally my highest choice for a moment. And you can probably see why. It has vexes on its side. They fly through walls, it can control them. They're already a cool magic show trick when combined with the blue sheep turning red. And then the evoker fangs. That's already a bunch of magic tricks, and everyone wants to see that. He can go across the country, or have shows of him doing magic. People are going to love that, and then the Vexes can do whatever task you want. Just ask the Evoker, he's going to do some things, and he's probably super intelligent. I mean, look at those robes. He has a totem of undying. If he can make more, what do you know? You have a death-defying commodity. People are going to love that. So, solid S tier pick. Although, I still think the Alay might be better, and another mob that single-handedly solves healthcare so, the Evoker is amazing because the Vexes and its various magical things. Here we have the Ghast. It's basically another Ender Dragon, except this time it's not a dragon and destroys anything it touches, but instead it fires fireballs that explode. Yeah, maybe not the best choice. I'm gonna say solid F tier for the Ghast. You probably can't control it, so it doesn't mean it's like a creeper but better. It's probably going to fly around and it's going to shoot things with flaming fireballs that explode. Then, on the other hand, we have the giant. And the giant is, of course, unused only in Java Edition. But it's like a zombie, but larger. Sure, a giant could be useful, but at the same time, the sheer havoc of it trying to navigate streets is probably enough to place an F tier regardless of whatever it could do. Because, one, this thing is probably bigger than your whole house. And two, it's going to walk around and cause destruction, even if it doesn't mean to. Simply a little bit much for a hazard, you know, not exactly worth the cost. Back underwater, we have ourselves the Glow Squid. And it might seem like, why even have this? This looks like something you wouldn't include on the tier list. Well, Glow Ink. If you can harvest the ink from it, now I have a bioluminescent ink and not much more than that. Although it's not something absolutely irreplaceable, though it's a pretty useful commodity that you could probably sell for a couple hundred bucks if not more, which makes it a pretty good A tier mob because it's not going to do anything alone, but similar to the chicken, its resources are what makes it valuable. For our four zombies, because of course the husk is up next, well, they all are pretty mid. The husk probably smells less bad than the zombie, but they're zombies, they're brainless, they're not going to be very useful for things. The zombified piglin, although the stinkiest of them all, has some decent team skills, so it could probably do something, but generally is too stinky to have around. While the drowned might be tolerable, we're not tolerating this piglin because look at it, it's rotting away as we speak. So pretty much all these aren't the best choice, they're a roommate, but they're probably going to mess things up and hold parties without asking. The zombie villager might be a bit better because of course, having been a villager, has some decent skills for things. But otherwise, all these mobs aren't very good. Right here, we have the illusioner. 
which is a Java exclusive unused illager. Pretty much, this guy can use magic. Not exactly the useful magic like the evoker, but he's an illusionist. He can split himself into four. So you can see how he's a little trippy right now. It seems like his behavior might be a little broken on the latest version. But still, this is quite the useful power. He can split himself into four. Imagine what kinds of magic shows could be done with this guy. So definitely someone you might want to have around because you can see, well, he's an illusioner. Although he's seemingly attacked by zombies for some reason, but still, this power is incredibly useful. Now for the Iron Golem, this guy is going to be very useful for whatever task you need. Look at him. He's strong, dependable, repairable with iron. Pretty much the only thing that gets in the way is his size, which makes him another good A tier mob. No questions asked, F tier. This guy is going to pretty much set things on fire. While not directly fiery like the blaze, this guy is going to bounce around and doesn't do much more than that. Probably decently hostile, made out of a molten rock. Yeah, I don't think the magma cream is very useful, especially since that probably is not extractable normally, so solid F tier. It's just going to cause a mess and do nothing more. But on the other hand, we have ourselves the other M mob, and that is the mushroom, and the cow, technically. But I skipped the cow for a moment because I completely forgot. So, the mushroom and the cow are both solid S tier mobs. Sure, they might not be able to talk and seemingly don't have any unique properties until you realize that this is Minecraft and follows Minecraft logic. It's infinite milk, and in the case of the mushroom, infinite mushroom stew as well. Ever wanted to have infinite food? Well, you have these guys. All you need to do is have a little pasture for them, although you might have to get a bigger house. The sheer amount of milk and mushroom stew you're getting from these guys is going to be more than enough to offset the cost. Pretty much. All the milk industry is going to be yours with a singular cow. I don't exactly see any usage in the phantom. It's going to fly around, might bite people if it's particularly hostile, and that's pretty much it. There is nothing to gain from the phantom. F tier. Now for some generally quite dependable mobs. We have the piglin and the piglin brute. And both of these are going to be working. I mean, if you read the lore of the game from Mojang, they're the reason why the netherite ore is all gone and there's only ancient debris, so they must have some sort of mining operation. And although they might not have the best time in the overworld, there's potentially something that can be done about that and I'm going to ignore it for the sake of this argument. And with this, I'd say the piglin is probably a little bit lower than the brute, mainly because it's kind of greedy, it might hold some unsolicited parties, but it's going to be a decently good worker. You can see they're quite organized actually, even if they have a little bit of a mess called their bastions. While the piglin brute is excellent home defense and is much more motivated than its normal counterpart, along with having some nice physical endurance in the case of a workplace accident. Now for the Pillager, and by extension the Vindicator because they're so similar. I mean, they're not as good as Villagers, but they're still going to get the job done. Maybe a little bit grumpy, not the best personality, but they're certainly going to work, and they'd probably do really well. So I'm going to say that they're both A tier mobs, potentially the Vindicator with a little bit better, considering it probably built the Woodland Mansions, but the Pillagers still have some pretty good organization and target practice. They can probably dedicate themselves to learning a new trade. And now, we're already most of the way through the list. We have the Ravager here. And if you can somehow tame it, well, now you have a giant Ravager. It's an angry cow, but there's a bit of a problem. On top of its bad temperament, its only good usage is as a work animal. But unfortunately, we're in the modern day, which means it doesn't have a use as a work animal. Nowadays, we have things like tractors, which pretty much leaves it jobless and little more than a hostile creature that doesn't make more anything. It kind of sits around and looks angry all the time. For the same reasons as the magma cube, this slime is not useful. It is made out of sludge. That's pretty much it. 
is a glue machine, but it's going to create a mess. You're not going to want it in your house, which means it's not going to be a good roommate. While potentially a good source of glue, yeah, there's not exactly more you can say. D or F tier. And then, for the other mob at this, we have the snowman. And the snowman has not many redeeming qualities. You can see, it is not very good at aiming, which means it's probably not very good at working a job either with those motor skills. And on top of that, it's going to leave a trail of snow. But that trail of snow is what brings it back into the game. It's infinite water. So yeah, you have to give it that. So solid S tier, mainly because it's infinite water and you can sell that even if the general snowman is not going to be a very useful roommate in itself. Now we have the Vex alone. And here's the thing about the Vex. It can phase through walls. And unlike the Evoker, which can summon these, but only for some period of time, well, this guy's gonna stay around. He's gonna phase through walls, he's gonna bring whatever he's holding with them, because, well, look at it. He has an iron sword, and considering the amount of times I've been hit by it, I'm pretty confident he can bring that thing through walls. So, need to give something to someone else across the room, hand it to him. If there's something in the way, you can still do that. Which means now you have a little employee that can pretty much carry things around through walls. This would be incredibly useful. Because ever need something from someone across the building? Well, send the Vex to do it for you. And Vanina, you know, it's gonna do it in record time, can chase incredibly quickly. I mean, have you guys fought an evoker during a raid? It's pretty hard. Yeah. You should probably get a Vex if you're not looking for anything super world domination-y, like the OA. Now, we have the basic villager. It's a basic villager, very dedicated to his job, and probably a decent personality, although a little basic. So, generally, good S tier. On the other hand, we had the Wandering Trader, which initially is going to place a little lower because, of course, the villager can produce things like diamond gear very rapidly, but, and, what do you know, invisibility potions. The Wandering Trader, although probably more of a historian than anything, can brew potions, which makes him much more valuable. Although not nearly as valuable as some of the things I missed on the list earlier. So as a little callback, the sheep. And here's why the sheep is useful. The amount of wool it can produce. Every time it eats grass, it has a whole new coat. It's pretty much a whole pasture in one. Ever wanted to dominate the wool industry? Well, you have your animal right here. Just feed it some grass and watch as you have a whole new coat of fur for it. And yeah, you can probably see where that's going. Ever wanted to make infinite wool? Yep, get some grass and get this sheep. Right here, we have the ward. While you could see it being very useful because of its sheer power, it's probably not going to do much. Look at it. It straight up sleeps until you set off an alarm four times, and then it's blind. Sure, it might have pretty good vibration sense, but otherwise, it's going to be a bit of an issue to get the warden doing pretty much anything. So I'm going to say it's a D tier because, yeah, it's not going to be doing much. But hey, at least it's home defense, and if you can convince it to do something, it has some serious strength behind it. Now, we have my number two pick. And this one might come as a surprise, especially since it seems relatively benign. The Witch. Here's the thing about the Witch. Brews potions. Even if you only include the ones that she can use in combat, still, that's water breathing, that's fire resistance, instant health, regeneration, or actually maybe not regeneration, poison, slowness. Although those negative ones might not have much of a usage, those positive ones is pretty much free healthcare. All you need to do is give her some ingredients. She's going to be incredibly useful with those potions, and is quite intelligent if she knows how to do those. Maybe not the most pleasant looking, but otherwise incredibly useful for that. And then we have ourselves the Wither Skeleton. It's like a skeleton, but probably a little bit better. Maybe a little uh, life defiling properties with the Wither effect. But hey, it's a decent mob to have around. But then we have its more powerful variant, the Wither. F tier, you're not going to do anything with this, it's going to ruin everything. Have the Wither, alright? 
it's going to blow things up, and it's not going to be useful. With every mob that isn't a generic animal now raided, well, it's time to look at the tier list that I've been assembling in the background. Of course, we have at the bottom the things that I didn't rank. Because, of course, a lot of these things are typical animals. A spider is an oversized spider, and a lot of things don't have real life uses, like the strider. You're not going to be traversing over lava. And then we go up to our pretty bad mobs. Nobody's going to want these. They're going to be complete trouble. The guardian's going to pretty much get in the way, and that's about it. Then, up here in D tier, we have ourselves the bad mobs, but they could still have some usage if harnessed correctly. And then C tier are basic mobs. You can see not very many. The endermite can be gotten rid of pretty easily, so it's like not having a roommate. And other ones are going to have some sort of usage, probably with a drawback though. Then in B tier are skeletons, because they're probably a bit smarter than our zombies, because hey, at least they can operate without any sort of brain. These guys might still have some of it, and it doesn't show. The Piglin Brute, pretty good. The Drowned, of course, swims underwater. Elder Guardian might be a pain to keep, but mining fatigue is incredibly valuable. The B, because it's a very, very powerful B. And then A tier, we have ourselves our basic mobs, and then one that I missed accidentally in the video, the Shulker. The reason why the Shulker is useful is simply because of the levitation powers. And if you do count Shulker shells, and shulker boxes as being humanly liftable items, that's S tier, but I'm going to assume not. So pretty much keep one of those on the fire rescue team, and it's going to start levitating cars into the air, so pretty useful. And now for our S tier, pretty much these guys are going to be incredibly useful, or somehow revolutionize the world. Infant eggs, phase through walls, very good worker, infant wool, invisibility potions, and a good worker, Summons things with magic, infinite water, infinite milk, infinite milk and soup, infinite healthcare, and infinite workers. So pretty much all of these has at least one sort of usage you can take out of it. And with that, it's the end of today's video. If you enjoyed this video, remember, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out and shows me that this new format of video, of course not going to replace tutorials or anything, just an occasional thing, well, shows me that people actually like it, and of course vice versa. Either way, enjoy the rest of your day. Gearsaw out.